verses 1 through 10. That's Revelation chapter 19, verses 1 through 10. And I'm going to be reading this from the New American Standard Version. And it reads, After these things, I heard something like a loud voice of a great multitude in heaven saying, Hallelujah, salvation and glory and power belong to our God. Why? Because his judgments are true and righteous. For he has judged the great harlot who was corrupting the earth with her immorality. And he has avenged the blood of his bond servants on her. Amen. And in verse three, it says, and a second time, uh, they said, hallelujah. All righty. Her smoke rises up forever and ever. And the 24 elders and the four living creatures fell down and worshiped God who sits on the throne saying, Amen. Hallelujah. And a voice came from the throne saying, give praise to our God, all you, his bond servants, you who fear him, the small and the great. Then I heard something like the voice of a great multitude and the sound of many waters and like the sound of the mighty peals of thunder saying, hallelujah. For the Lord our God almighty reigns. Let us rejoice and be glad and give the glory to him. For the marriage of the lamb has come and his bride has made herself ready. It was given to her to clothe herself in fine linen, bright and clean. For the fine linen is the righteous acts of the saints. Then he said to me, write. Blessed are those who are invited to the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said to me, these are true words of God. Then I fell at his feet to worship him. But he said to me, do not do that. I am a fellow servant of yours and your brethren who hold the testimony of Jesus. Worship God for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Amen. So we as the church of Jesus Christ, okay, we're his bride. And there's going to be a wedding that takes place and in, uh, in heaven. So we're looking forward to being attending that particular wedding as the, as the bride of Christ. And the Holy Spirit's making us ready because he's coming back for a church without spot, without wrinkle. And we're going to look in our best. And remember, it's not our performance. It's never the performance of us but it's always based on the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. Because our performance, sometimes we're going to fall short, but it's only through the blood of Jesus Christ that the church is complete. Amen. Let us pray. Most gracious God, our heavenly father, we are truly grateful and thankful for this day, this day, which we set aside as the Lord's day, father God, for on this day, your son, you raised your son up. Father God, with all power, with all authority, and he is the head of the church. He is the head of our lives. He's our Lord and he's our Savior. So we bless the name of Jesus. We magnify the name of Jesus this morning. Oh, thank you, Father God, for each and every person who, with every method, either through the phone call or through the computer or through our phones, Lord, have joined us on this virtual worship experience this morning. Oh, we thank you. Father God, we ask now that your Holy Spirit would have its way in this service, Father God. We ask, Father God, that we would have receptive hearts and minds that we might receive your word. But most of all, Father God, we pray through what we've done here that your glory will be displayed. Your honor will be displayed, Father God. Hallowed be your name in all the earth through the service this morning. Bless our preacher who will present your word, Father God. We know you've prepared him, Father God. Take over his heart and his mind that he might proclaim your eternal word. We thank you again for the First Baptist Church of Past Town. We thank you, Father God, for allowing us to continue to survive even through this. For on this, on the rock of you being the Christ, Father God, you know we you formed your church and we know the gates of 
Hades will not prevail against us. So God, Father God, we thank you. We bless you. Bless us in this new year, this 2021. Help us to grow closer to you. Help us to become more obedient to you, Father God. And through all of our requests, we'd be ever so mindful to give you the glory, give you the praise. In Jesus' precious name, amen. No problem. No problem. We want to give anybody an opportunity to say something if they need to. So, uh, so as we move on in our service, we always and like we always want to remember our sick, our shut in and our bereaved families. And uh, I just want to read some names. And again, if I've forgotten someone, uh, I'm sure somebody will uh, give us any names that uh, we've forgotten. And uh, but I just like to always keep them first and foremost in our thoughts and more importantly, our prayers. Uh, our sick and shut in, Sister Lillian Alder, Sister Shirley Hines, Brother Walter and Sister Priscilla Johnson, Sister Betty Lou Burton, Sister Esther Gaffney, Sister Ann Grant, Brother Eddie Young, Brother Hank Lewis, I miss his voice, uh, Brother Ed Lewis, Brother Herman Carter, Reverend Norman Allen, Sister Lula Pollard, Sister Ella Rudolph, Reverend Brody Mathis, mm. Sister Jeannie London, Sister Annabelle Jackson, uh, Brother Emmett Hunt. And if I've missed any other name, uh, like I said, uh, you can uh, remind me or remind us. Also, uh, as always, we always want to keep in prayer our bereaved families. Uh, yesterday, they had the homegoing service of our own brother Leslie Crutchfield, and so we want to keep the Crutchfield family in our prayers. We we were blessed this morning to see Sister Ann on our Sunday school, and uh, you know, uh, attending our service. So uh, she's just a blessing to us, and uh, Leslie. Amen. Amen. Leslie was a blessing to me personally, but all our sick and our shut in. I mean, our all our bereaved families: the Rudolph family, the Brickus family, the the Lewis family the Jones family, the Stevens family, uh, the Birch family, the uh, Hines and Davis families, uh, all of those uh, experienced loved ones uh, going to be with the Lord uh, this past year. And so we want to keep them in prayer uh, and in our thoughts. Amen. Um, today we'll have our communion service. And again, as always, i uh, our trustees will be at the church uh, from one to two to take any offerings. Uh, we had a little snow this morning, but uh, looks like it's uh, stopped. So, and this is a blessing because uh, when we have this means, uh, we get big snowstorms. But now we have a means that we can still meet. We don't have to ever cancel church. <laughs> For some, right. some of you might be good, but for me, it's a blessing. Amen. You don't have to get in your cars and drive and pull and worry about accidents and things of that nature. So God is always blessing, always blessing. Yeah. Um, I don't think I have anything else. Uh, uh, Deacon Lewis, anything else uh, you, you have that you know of? Uh, no, no, just uh, only tomorrow. Um, any of you that are familiar with the Sellers family, Robert Sellers funeral will be at the church tomorrow morning, viewing from 9 to 11. All right, thank you, thank you, Joe. Uh, uh Deacon Andrews, mm -hmm. um, could you keep uh, Janet's sister, my sister-in-law, Mary King, Mayo, and their family in your prayers. Uh, from what I understand, uh, she's in the hands of the Lord right now. It's just a matter of time. Amen. Family in prayer. Amen. Amen. And then also, uh, uh, yesterday I found out about the Hills family. I think, uh, uh, was that Jimmy Hills? Uh, Joe. Uh, Joe. 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 Okay. Hills. All righty. So we want to keep that family in prayer. He had a, I guess he had a massive stroke. So we want to oh keep. My goodness. Yeah, we want to keep that family. Oh my goodness. Yep. Mm -hmm. So we just we just never know. So uh, so we want, that's why we want to keep 
prayed up and keep the church and all anybody that we know of. We want to keep them in prayer. Uh, at this time, I'm going to turn our Brother service. Brother, 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 I just want to say an extra prayer for Sister Annabelle Jackson. Uh, she had a blood clot, has a blood clot in her leg. Her knee is swollen and she's in a lot of pain. So let's please keep her in prayer. Amen. Prayer. Absolutely. 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 Uh, if there's nothing else, I'm going to turn this over to uh, Reverend Steve Crutchfield. He can come uh, at his, in his own way. Uh, amen. Amen. Good morning, everybody. And praise the Lord. And thank God for bringing us through another month and another year. Uh, there's a lot of work and praying work we need, as you heard, all of the sick and shut in and the families and people that we know who are in need of prayer right now. And just want to say thank God for waking us up this morning and waking me up and all of your families and Today, there's a word that I have in, from the Lord that I hope that will encourage each and every one of us as we come into this new year, leaving behind the old year, one in which we went through a lot. And as you see, coming into 21, we're going to go through things again, even more. Yeah. And so we need to hold on to God's unchanging hand. So today, if uh, you have your Bibles, I'd ask if you would... Uh, turn to the book of Revelation and to the fifth chapter of the book of Revelation. Now I'll give a few moments for us to get our place. Revelations chapter five, and we're going to begin at that first verse. And you'll find these words recorded. And I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written within and on the backside sealed with seven seals. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, who is worthy to open the book and to loose the seals thereof? And no man in heaven, nor in earth, neither under the earth, was able to open the book, neither to look thereon. And and I wept much because no man was found worthy to open and to read the book, neither to look thereon. And on the, and one of the elders saith unto me, weep not. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, hath prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals thereof. And I beheld and lo, in the midst of the throne and of the four beasts and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb as it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent forth into all the earth. And he came and took the book out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne. And when he had taken the book, the four beasts, and four and twenty elders fell down before the Lamb, having every one of them harps and golden vows full of odors, which are the prayers of the saints, of saints. And they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof, for thou wast slain, and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation and has made us one, uh, made us unto our God, kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. And I beheld and I heard the voice of many angels round about the throne and the beasts and the elders and the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands saying with a loud voice, worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessings and every creature which is in heaven and on on the earth and under the earth and such as are in the sea and all that are in them heard i saying blessing and honor and glory 
and power be unto him that sitteth upon the throne and unto the lamb forever and ever and the four beasts said amen and the four and twenty elders fell down and worshiped him that liveth forever and forever and for a thought today i want to come from that ninth verse where it says, and they sang and they sung a new song. And they sung a new song. <clears throat> As we come into this new year, the first message we got on watch night service was a new covenant for a new year. And Reverend Till preached from his heart, telling us about what God wanted us to do as we come into this new year and the lord has laid it on my heart to continue with this thing this thought of a new year this newness of life and as we come into this new year he laid on my heart that we come in with a new song you see i don't know all the words to the song but on new years we have in our culture this tradition of singing this song, and I don't even know all the words, but if you know it, you can sing it. You know what I'm talking about. May old acquaintance be forgotten, and all things be left behind. So we want to forget about the bad things and those things that hurt us in 2020 and carry into this new year, new ideals, new ways, new things. It's a new and bright thing of, in, in front of us. And, and this morning, uh, as I listened to the Sunday school lesson that was a uh, so adequately taught by our own deacon andrews he, he taught us that god will give you life and, and a more abundant life he wants to give us a newness of life and in that first miracle there was the the, 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 the new wine that the, the new wine and so as we look forward to 2021 we look for the newness of our lives and the good things that are to come in our lives and so in our text what we find is we find John who uh, was on the island of Patmos and in the spirit was allowed to see up into heaven. And this is our scene now. He's before the throne and he's seeing uh, the right hand. It says in verse one, the right hand of him that sat on the throne and, and, and a book written within and on the backside sealed with seven seals. And I saw a strong angel, he said. I saw it, and we know that John was in the spirit, and we know that the word tells us they that worship God must worship him in spirit and in truth. So we see John now as he's writing down this revelation that God had told him to write. As we studied the book of Revelation and, and saw that John was told, write these things down. And so now as he is writing in this fifth chapter, he says, I saw a strong angel proclaiming, with a loud voice who is worthy to open the book and to loose the seals thereof and no man in heaven nor in earth neither under the earth was able to open the book neither to look thereon and as we look at 2020 and the uh, pandemic and our lives now we looking at this situation we find that many of us are weeping because we don't know what's going to happen and as 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 we, we we understand our government to to be the government that is supposed to protect us and provide for us and help us and keep us healthy we find that the government is letting us down now the government is, is supposed to be supplying the vaccine and yet we find that all of the talk of the vaccine that was supposed to be supplied is being held back some is even being held and, and, and held back uh, 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 on purpose and we find that there's been lies on the left side and lies on the right side and we don't know who or what to believe because uh, there's a time that we have never seen before in church let me just say this and this is just my own thoughts you know God has a way of dealing and judging and setting things in order with his church and with the world and we've never been through anything like this and we can look back and remember how our, our forefathers and, and not so much our forefathers but our fathers and our mothers told us and taught us about how they got through 
during World War II. And I can't imagine how it was like being under the control and the world being under control of an evil man like Hitler. But the world was, and we said that we never wanted to see that again. But I can imagine that during those times, it was terrible times. And even going back further than that, back into the 1917, when we had a pandemic before, and you can go into the history books and look and find that they wore masks then too, and they didn't know what to do. And we find ourselves now in this time where families are separated. But as you heard uh, Deacon Andrew say, thanks be to God for he allows us even with the snow to come down now that God says, you don't have a reason to shut the doors of the church, the four walls of the church. And so we can see that the walls of the church don't mean anything to God because, see, we have that technology that he has allowed us to have. And so when you use things for good, God is always glorified. And so God will not be held back even in times like these. And so we come to find that as John, the revelator, the one who was writing this under the uh, uh, inspiration of God and the Holy Spirit, we find that even there was weeping. As the text tells us, he says, I wept much. In other words, he was crying bitterly. Lord, because no man was found worthy to open and to read the book, neither to look thereon. One of the things that I saw, and I failed to tell you, but I saw three W's in this text. And that first W is wept, as we find ourselves weeping in these times today. Weeping because of all of the things that we're going through. And it's not necessarily because you or me personally has done anything wrong. But I believe, as I said, that God sometimes has to shake us up to let us find out what he's all about, what he really means. And as you find in this scene, God has these judgments that he already is about to unveil on the earth uh, towards the churches and mankind to let them know that there's going to be a shaking up now. And so we find that John wept and he cried bitterly because there was no one and then the text tells us in verse five, he says, and one of the elders saith unto me, weep not. And the way I, I looked at this is that in our churches and even with past town, you see, we have strong leadership. We have men uh, on our deacon board, uh, Deacon Lewis and Deacon Smith and Deacon Andrews and Deacon Campbell and you know, we even got one that is still a deacon in a on the on the on the ministry board who's Reverend Till, who was still a deacon because once you become a deacon, you're always a deacon. And see, God ordained it that way because he knew that his church would need somebody to stand in and tell you it's gonna be all right. And our deacons, we need to always pray for them because these are one of the elders, and just like uh, the elders told him, he said, Don't weep. Our deacons tell us each and every week, hang in there, church. Hold on to God's unchanging hand. We know everything is going to be rough and tough, but I trust in God, and I want you to trust in God just like I do. I know I hurt too, and I weep too sometimes, but God is able. He says, behold, listen to what he says in verse 5. The lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, have prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals thereof. Now then, in this book of Revelations, you know, there's a lot of symbolisms. And these symbolisms, number one is the lion of the tribe of Judah. And I'll jump back to it in a few minutes, but many of you who study your word and understand the gospels, understand that uh, in Matthew, he looked at him like the lion of the tribe of Judah. He was, he was the king of kings. He was the the Lord of Lord, and each one of those gospel writers wrote about Jesus in their own particular way. And once again, I tell you, we're blessed. We're blessed, past town, to have teaching and leaders and people who love the Lord. Once again, this morning, it was taught us in our Sunday school lesson that he was the lion. He was from the tribe of Judah. He was that 
strong one. And it says the root of David, you know, seed of Abraham, son of David. He's a meek and humble lamb. You hear these words ringing in our church services, in our songwriting, even with Brother Dale Coleman, who sings those words, meek and humble man, known throughout the land, son of Abraham, seed of David. You get to see this picture of who God is. And so the elder said, we not, because the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, the promised one, have prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals thereof. So in this symbolism, what we find in these seven seals is believed, and I've read a couple different writers, for what was happening at this time is that John was seeing these seven seals, which is symbolic of the seven uh, ministries of the Holy Spirit. At this time, what is believed by many writers is that John is seeing the thunderings and the lightnings that are coming because of what is about to take place on the earth. And these rulings and these judgments is coming in the way of thunder and lightning and bolts. But you see that he's saying that these seven seals are going to be opened up, which is symbolic of the sevenfold ministry of the Holy Spirit. And listen what he said. Now, how listen how he conjunctions. He says, and I behold and lo, in the sixth verse, in the midst of the throne and of the four beasts and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb hallelujah mm -hmm. as it had been slain having seven horns and seven eyes which are the seven spirits of god sent forth into all the earth that's what john was talking about the seven spirits the seven fold, 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 fold ministry of the holy spirit and he came and he took the book out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne well, you know who sits upon the throne for his name is God. He is the Alpha and the Omega. Mm -hmm. He is the Almighty. Mm -hmm. It says he took the books out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne. And when he had taken the book, the four beasts and the four 20 elders fell down before the lamb. Mm -hmm. Having every one of them, their hearts and a golden vial full of odors which are the prayers of the saints now in order to understand the beast and how this thing is and how god loves us so much you only need to look to the fourth chapter and let's just take and look back at that fourth chapter and look in the uh sixth verse and you'll find it says John wrote these words and he said, and before the throne, there was a sea of glass like unto crystal. And in the midst of the throne and around about the throne were four beasts full of eyes before him. And the first beast was like a lion. And the second beast was like a calf. And the third beast had a face as a man. And the fourth beast was like a flying eagle. Many writers believe that this was symbolic of the way that the gospel writers, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, wrote about their, their, their view of who God, Jesus was. For Matthew called him the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. He was the Lion of the tribe of Judah. Mark showed him as the servant. For in Mark's gospel, you find that Jesus was the servant he came to seek and to save that which was lost. He came to heal all of our sins and all of our putrid impurities, all of our sick and sinful ways. In Mark's gospel, you find Jesus healing and dealing with our sickness, not only just our physical sickness, but our mental sickness. And then in Luke's gospel, you find that he is the son of man. He is the son of man. He come through a man and he became the son just like a man, just like us in order to understand and to be like us and to understand that he had faced all kind of sin, but was without sin. But then mm -hmm. as the teacher this morning taught us in Sunday school, John had no nothing to do with the way that they did wrote their gospels for Matthew saw him one way 
Mark saw him another way, Luke saw him another way, but John saw him in all of his deity, in the fullness of his Christianity, of his Christosity and who he was, that he was not only a man, but he was a man God. And that he didn't have to be appointed king because he was born king. He didn't have to be called the son of man because he was the creator of man. And so now we find that in all these ways, that's why the elder told him, don't weep, my mm -hmm. brother, because the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has prevailed and, has, and is a worthy to open the book and to loose the seven seals. And so now, today, uh, not only do we weep, but my brothers and my sisters, I dropped by today to tell you mm -hmm. the reason why the elder had to tell him and told him. He said, listen, he said, and they sung a new song. They sung a new song saying, thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof, for thou wast slain and has redeemed us to God by the blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. And furthermore, in verse 10, he says, and has made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. And I beheld and I heard the voice of many angels round about the throne and the beasts and the elders and the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands saying with a loud voice, worthy you see we might weep for a little while but i'll drop by to tell you that jesus is worthy he is worthy of all the praise you see the the the, the, the elder told him don't you weep my brother and i'm telling you now don't weep my brother and my sister because jesus is worthy of all praise because he was slain before the foundation of the world and jesus will place he will place everything and make everything all right not only did jesus go slain for by 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 men for our sin but his blood has given us a new life his blood has given us a way to the tree of life and his blood shall carry us through this life you see jesus is worthy of all praise power glory and honor i don't know about you but every time i think about jesus i have a new song and as i go in the 19th i mean 2021 i have a new song in my heart because i know that jesus is worthy of all the praise jesus is the one that gave, kept me all through the night jesus is the one that'll keep me the next day and the next day jesus Jesus is the one that brought me out of my surgery. Jesus is the one that helped to get my son back on the right track. Jesus is the one that kept me off when I couldn't keep myself. Jesus is the one that gave me newness of life. Jesus is the one that woke me up from my surgery. Jesus is the one that's going to wake me up tomorrow if he so desire. Jesus is the one that placed this song in my heart. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus is worthy of all praise. Do I have a witness? Sang with a loud voice in verse 12, worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessings and every creature which is in heaven and on the earth and under the earth and such as we in the sea and all that are in them heard I saying blessing and honor and glory and power be unto him that sitteth upon the throne and unto the lamb for the lamb, Jesus is the lamb of God, the holy child, the one who set me free. Jesus, hallelujah, placed a new song in my heart and I'm gonna praise him all the days of my life. I don't know about you, but I love the Lord and I'm gonna praise his name because he is worthy of all the praise. You see, it was his blood that set me free. It was his life that gave me living. I don't know about you, but I'm going to sing his praises all of 2021. Jesus helped me when I couldn't help myself. Jesus forgave me when I couldn't forgive myself. Jesus lift me up when nobody else could help. Jesus loved me when nobody else would love me. Jesus is worthy of everything that I got. Jesus is my song. Jesus is my power. Jesus is my life. Jesus is my might. Jesus is my inside. Jesus will get me in. Jesus will get me out. I don't know about you, but Jesus, 
Jesus, Jesus is worthy of all of your praise. And I declare today that the word says that in the four beasts said amen, and the four and twenty elders fell down and worshiped him that liveth forever and never. Amen. Sang a new song. You see, the children of Israel said, How, how can we sing a new, a, a, a new song in a barren land? And I drop by to tell you, church, the way you sing a new song is you just open up your heart and let him in. Open up your heart today. Yes. And realize that he is worthy of all the praise. You see, I might promise you something and let you down, but Jesus has promises all in his word and he never comes short. You see, he's worthy because he did what he said he was going to do. He's worthy because he got up on the third day with all power in his hands. He's worthy because there's no power greater than God on this earth. He's worthy because he's God all by himself. He's worthy because all of mankind and every living thing in heaven, in the earth, and under the earth owes him everything that they got. I don't know about you, my brothers and my sisters, but I got a new song, and the new song is Jesus is worthy. He's worthy of all of my praise. Yes. Everything that I got, I'm going to give it to him. Everything and every thought, even when I don't want to act right, I'm going to ask him to show me how to get right. Even when I don't want to do right, I'm going to say, Jesus, uh, forgive me for my sins and help me understand because you are worthy. And I don't know where he bought you from, but it bought me from a mighty long way. And I'm going to sing my song. Really, I have to sing it by myself. I don't care what you think. I don't care what the world thinks. I'm going to sing a new song. And that's all I got. If you got a song, you can sing your song right wherever you are. Because singing is good for the soul. Singing will liberate you Amen. when you understand that I'm not worthy. My mama can't set me free. My daddy can't set me free. My sister can't set me free. Mm -hmm. My brother can't set me free. Only Jesus. Yeah. Only Jesus, only Jesus, sing a new song, yes. sing a new song, yeah. sing a new song. I dare you to sit down and have a little prayer with Jesus, uh -huh. feel a little fire burning, know a little prayer wheels turning, and he'll give you, he'll give you a new song yeah. to let you know that he's all right. Yeah. Jesus is all right. He'll heal your land. He'll heal your body. He'll save your soul. Hello. He'll let you know that he loves you. He'll walk with you. He'll talk with you. Jesus is all right. Jesus is all right. Jesus is all right. I don't know about you, but I know for myself, if you don't know him, get to know him. Yes. He makes yes. mighty good friends. He'll take care of you when nobody else will. He'll put food on your table when you don't have no money. He'll put clothes on your back when you ain't got none. He'll keep yes, a roof Lord. over your head. I'm going to sing a new song. I'm going to love my Lord all the day long. Jesus, Amen. Jesus is all right with me. Amen. Jesus is Lord of Lords and King of Kings. He's worthy. Because he shed his blood for me, a wretch undone. Yes, I don't Lord. deserve his grace and mercy, but he's worthy because he never stopped loving me. I mm -hmm. don't know what he's done for you, but I can tell you what he's done for me. And I'm going to sing his song. I'm going to sing his praise. I'm going to thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Sing a new song. Yes,